I'll tell you why I talk about customers and uh, love John's last, last slide about follow your passion. I am passionate about customers. They have a special place in my heart. Because when you run a business, like all y'all do, or you will do, we all have customers. And if you put that customer in the middle of what you do, it's really hard to go wrong, but it's really hard to get them in the middle and to keep them there. So I want to spend some time talking about what's up, how they've changed, what we might do about this. The customer today is thinking about what we put them through <clears throat> Excuse me. every time they do business with us. They call that experience. And today, experience is more important than brand or product or pretty much anything else. Latest survey, about a third of the people surveyed picked experience right off the top as the most important aspect of their relationship with an organization. So we'll talk a little bit about that. What you put your customers through is what they say it is. I can't tell you how many times my co-author and business partner and I enter a relationship with a new client and we ask them to tell us about the customer's perspective on their business. And we say, well, what do you know about uh, how the customer feels? Oh, I know a whole lot. Oh, that's great. Tell us about it. And they'll tell us some things and we'll say, well, how do you know that? And they get a little bit red in the face and they say, well, I just know. We say, well, that's great, but how do you know? And they say, they get redder in the face. They say, I've been in business for 182 years. They don't look that old, but that's what they say. And I just know. And that's a real danger sign for us because we really need to understand how the customer feels about what we put them through, especially today, as I'll show you later. I love it when I'm working with the group and I say, uh, who are your customers? And there are about three people who raise their hand and say, I don't have any customers. I find that fascinating because we believe that you either serve the, your customer or you serve those who serve your customer. And we know from research that the way we treat each other inside the organization has a whole lot to do with what happens to the customer. The companies that I'm talking about are the companies that exist in the top 20% of something called the American Customer Satisfaction Index. That's run by the University of Michigan, and it looks at companies in all different kinds of industries. And if you look at those companies in the top 20% of the American Customer Satisfaction Index, they have clobbered most any calculation of return that you can find. They only beat the S&P by about 200 percent, the Dow by 93, the NASDAQ by over 300. I'll take it. That's not bad. That's not bad. These are folks that focus on the customer experience. Okay. You'll see later as we look through some other statistics that if I can consistently deliver a service experience beyond expectation, I'm going to get a 12% lift to the propensity to come back and buy from me again. Now, I don't know about you, but I really like my customers that buy from me again. Thank you, Andy. Um, you'll also notice if I can proactively help my customer learn, I get almost a third, a 32% lift to repurchase. So when I give you a model of what we believe delivers a great experience in a few minutes, that teach me will definitely be up there. Uh, we know that the cost of keeping a customer is one-fifth to one-sixth the cost of getting a new one. So I'll try to keep my old ones. Sometimes we forget about that. We just talked about this. 95% of people who complain and you resolve their customer, they give you an 8% resolve their complaint, give you an 8% lift. So that's a lot, it's a mouthful to say that the customer is really, really powerful. 
We just talked about high tech without high touch. We think the service covenant, the agreement between the provider and the customer has shifted. When you create service, right, there are two parts to that, and the customer gets to play a role. When you take the opportunity for the customer to play a role away, they don't like that. It's like the self-checkout line, you know? They just left me there. They just left me there. I get a kick out of going through the self-checkout line and buying a bottle of wine because somebody's going to say they need to check my ID. That's really why I go through there because I never get my ID checked, you know. But when they have to do it there. you think they could think of a little bit better way to do that, but no, that's all right. It keeps me standing there, and it makes me wait. Don't you all love to wait? Have you noticed how much people like to wait today? Think about that as you think about your experience. And then the other thing that's going on is the power of the Internet. It's big, and we're going to talk about that off and on during our time together today. 51% of customers now use social media to communicate with organizations. So if you don't tweet and you don't Facebook, that's okay with me, but your customers do. And so you need to think about, for your business, what are we going to do? How do we want to respond to that? I work with the folks that um, run the public transportation system for the city of Philadelphia. And um, for their industry, they really sit way up high in terms of customer service. They have found that social media has been a very effective, effective way for them to communicate with their customers, and they're sort of leading the charge for that industry. So it's a, it's a big deal these days. You know, 32% of customers rate their overall satisfaction with the way organizations use social media is poor or very poor, so we have, we're not doing a great job. We've got to figure out how to do that. And I love this one. Bain said that people who engage with brands via social media demonstrate a deeper emotional commitment to those brands. And here's my favorite part. And they spend between 20 and 40% more than other customers. That'd be enough for me to figure out how to interact with somebody on social media. So um, John talked a little bit about the differences in demographics, and one of the big differences is the way different age groups communicate. That's, this is not an eye test. I didn't mean for you to be able to read that up there. The point is this. We communicate differently based on how old we are. Absolutely no question about it. When I went to college back in the dark ages, my father told me that I would call my mother once a week. And if I didn't, the check I was looking for wasn't showing up. I only tried it out one time to find out he meant it there. I have five children. Um, two of them are in, are in college right now. Three of them are out, thankfully. Um, and uh, how do they communicate with me about their financial needs? Text, frowny face, dollar sign, <laughs> out of cash. If I make a deposit, smiley face, dollar sign. And they think that's fine. They think we're connected. That's the way that we, so my point here is let your customers tell you how they want to communicate with you and you ch communicate with them on their chosen channel. Because it's all about emotion. It's all about emotion. So if you're sitting next to an engineer, lean over and give them a hand on that emotion thing, okay? It's about emotion. It's about what happens to us. It's about what causes us to tell stories, right? Service is about making memories and the experience of what you put people through is very individual, very emotional. So you've got to find a way to make a connection. I know, you're in the construction business. I know. 
I've had the good fortune to work with EDIS, I think since 2005, as a consultant of theirs. So I, do, I get that, I get that. It's the same, because we interviewed a lot of EDIS's customers when we started, and their partners. So we got to get our head around the fact that this emotional thing is a big deal. Now you are sending signals to your customers, and the people that work for you are sending signals to your customers all the time. So is your website. I know now you think I had way too much coffee before we started today. So what's going on with customers? The way we think about value as customers has always had three components, three components. The quality of the outcome or product, okay, a fair price, and what you put me through, the experience. I've always had three components. Now what's going on? What's going on? Well, doesn't take a mathematician to figure this out, right? Okay, we still have three components. Which one's the biggest? Experience. Significant difference? You bet it is. So I'm telling you, what you're doing to them is more important than ever before in the way they think about you and your organization. What's happened? Okay, first of all, their expectations keep changing. I apologize, it's hard to read that. They are changing fast and they're going up. They are up 33% in 12 months. They raise the bar on what they expect there. So not only are expectations of experience bigger in the equation, but they raise the bar. They think you ought to be better at what you do to them. How come? How come they did that? Well, the first thing is we got more choices. We got more choices than we've ever had before. I've been married for 38 years to the same woman. Don't tell her I said that. But um, it took me 37 years to realize when I'm driving home from the airport on Thursday night about 10 o'clock and she says, would you mind stopping at the grocery store? That really that question has one answer. Just one, I didn't realize this, one answer, right? Some of you guys are nodding like, you, you caught on to this too. So it has one answer. What is it? Yes dear. yes, dear, there's nothing I'd rather do. I've been on the road for eight weeks, but I sure would like to go to the grocery store on the way home, right? So uh, what do you want? I want a loaf of whole wheat bread. You've been to the bread wing of the grocery store lately. So if I get there, then i got to call home because if I pick out the wrong whole wheat, what happens? It doesn't even matter that I went to the grocery store. I might as well go back to the airport, you know? You know? But we got more choices. we got more choices now than we've ever, ever had before. Oops, I'm sorry. Customers are smarter than they've ever been, right? Have you noticed that? How do they get so smart? At dadgum internet, we can research anything, right? Just Google whatever it is you're worried about and research anything. My 23-year-old daughter is about to buy her first car, and my wife is about to drive me crazy because she doesn't get that you've got to be smarter than the car salesman before you get to the dealership, and you can do that on the internet. You can find out all that information. It's the same for just about anything that we buy. So customers are much smarter than they've ever been before. The other thing that customers have figured out, and we sort of taught them this, is the way they think about experience with whatever you do, it doesn't matter what industry you are, as they take little pieces of great experience that happened to them in their life, and they sort of put that all together and that's their measuring stick for how they measure you. So if they just got back from Disney, where they manage weight incredibly and entertain, and they're waiting at your place, guess whose standard they're using to measure weight? Disney. If they just called the FedEx call center, where somehow they answer the phone before it rings, I don't know how they did that, but if you had Express in your name, You'd be worried about that too. And they call you next, and your phone's still ringing, 
what are they going to do? Wonder why you can't do it like FedEx. If they call your person and they just finished talking to USAA where they have the most amazing customer information system and know everything about every customer, and you start asking them who they are and what their account number is, who are they going to compare you to? That last phone call. So that's the way they think about experience. So is it easy? It is not. It is not. That's a hard to read slide, but Bain did a study a few years ago and asked some international organizations if they provided a great service experience. Now I know you're going to find this amazing, but 80 percent of those executives in those organizations said absolutely. Then Bain did something really cool. They just went out and interviewed the customers of those organizations and said, does that organization provide a great experience? That's that itty bitty number up there. That's that 8 percent of the customers said that. 80 percent of the executives said that. Pretty big gap. What happened? Well, first of all, if you're not listening, if you're not staying connected to the customer, you really don't know. And secondly, sometimes we do things to loyal customers without thinking about it because we're so worried about getting new business that we sort of ignore the loyal customer or we make them mad. We make them mad. You say, I would never do that. Well, I hope not, but it does happen. Okay? Coming out of the recession, we like to think of customers as being picky, fickle, vocal, and vain. They're picky because they're not going to let go of that hard-earned dollar as easily as they used to let it go, right? They're looking for value, and value equals experience in their mind, okay? They're fickle. They're faster to leave than ever before. We used to say you get three strikes. Today, sometimes you don't even get one. How can that be possible? Easy. I read about you on the Internet. You didn't do a good job. I'm not coming. I'm not coming. They're very, very fickle. They're very fast to leave. And when they leave, do they have to tell you they're gone? No. They just leave. They're gone. They're vocal. We already talked about that. It's easy for them to be vocal. They're very, very vocal today. They're vain. They really want to feel that you have tailored the experience for them. And they want you to show them that you highly value their business. That's that vain piece more than ever before. And that's that big part of the pie that's experience. But the big deal is the wired piece. Now, when we say wired, we've been talking about the Internet. But the other thing about wired is have you noticed that the way we think about time is a little bit different today? If you send an email, when do you expect a response? A couple weeks? Hope not. You expect it pretty fast, right? If you send a text, when do you expect a response? My children have educated me on this. They send a text, I'm supposed to pull over, stop the car, and immediately reply no matter where I am. They really get mad when I'm in an airplane and didn't get the text and on a long flight there, right? But we live in a world where it's a 24 by 7 world, right? You brought your favorite electrical appliance with you? We never, we're never far from them, right? So we can stay connected. Do customers expect you to reply over the weekend? Some of them do. You need to know that. You need to know that. The way they think about time is different than ever was before. And so when I say I love to wait, do you like to wait? Who likes to wait? You all still awake or you just, are we still, who like, nobody likes to wait. So it, it's amazing to me that when I go to a doctor who kind of gets this, who's never late, who on Tuesday was standing out front at the reception desk because I was five minutes late waiting for me. I love that guy. And then he takes me, walks me back to the examination room. Man, I love that. Versus my dermatologist, who I went to two weeks ago, who's a friend. I mean, our kids went to school together and all that jazz. So he kept me in the waiting room 20 minutes, and they do that old trick, you know. Mr. Patterson, 
and you go back and you go in the room and take off all your clothes and put on that, you know, little robe and sit there feeling like, oh my God, you know, you're freezing or whatever in that little robe, right? And you look, let's see, well, I got, you know, I took off all my clothes. The doctor must going to be here soon. Please, please, right? 20 minutes go by, you know. One another 20, you know. You're like, you know. So you know what I figured out? You want to set off a code red in the doctor's office? Open the door and walk out in the hall. (laughs) 60-year-old naked man in the hall. They all come. Mr. Patterson, everything okay? I said, well, no, where is the doctor? You know, and they look at me like I'm crazy, right? But we hate to wait in our 24 by 7 world. Well, the customer today wants to be a partner of yours. And by partner, we mean the customer wants to be involved and treated like they have a relationship. They want to be in the center of what you do. So when you design a new process or procedure, they want to feel like you thought about them when you put that in place. When you do a policy, they want to think you thought about them when you put that in place. How would you treat a partner? That's what they want to feel like. Those organizations on the slide up there get partnership. We got any Zappos customers? Anybody use Zappos out here? A few hands down like this. I know why, because there are too many shoes arriving at your house, right? They get partnership. Zappos, which is an internet retailer, if you go on any page in their website, they give you several different ways to talk to a person. High tech with high touch. So they never take the customer's role out of that. We got any USAA customers in here? A couple USAA customers. They have done a phenomenal job with their customer information system and you call there and whoever you talk to knows all about you is very knowledgeable of their products and can help you with whatever you want to do. It's an amazing system. They're the first bank to let you take a picture of your check, email the picture, and they credit the deposit as soon as it gets there. Now, I like that. I like that. eBay created an app to let you participate in an auction on your smartphone. Only 5 million downloads the first month and only 500 million in transactions the first month because they listened to their customers about how to design it. Some guy was sitting in the parking lot of the Walmart while his wife was inside and he bought an antique red Corvette. I'm not sure he lived when she returned to the car, but he had a really good time with that app. And it's because they connected with the customer to design that. So what should you do? We think you ought to create a customer experience that has these five components to me, okay? Understand me, you got to know that customer better than you ever did before. Include me, let me be your partner. Teach me. The highest lift to repurchase 32% was teach me. Share me something new. You're all experts in what you do. Help your customer learn. Protect me means Do the basics that you offer, do them right every time for consistency, comfort, ease, that builds trust, okay? And surprise me, give me something sparkly. You remember, some of you are old enough to remember Cracker Jacks, right? You got a box of Cracker Jacks, what did you look for? That stupid prize, how much was that prize worth? Not much, but it sure was fun pulling that prize out of there, wasn't it? I just got to tell you one more thing. See that? That's from a great book called Strategic Customer Service by John Goodman, and he breaks down service delight and what the meaning is if you deliver to the intent to repurchase, and I like those big numbers on there. I like those big numbers. So Coca-Cola is doing a great thing. You seen the new Coke machine, right? Seen the new Coke machine where you can make any kind of awful flavor you want to right? Just like that. It, and kids love it. They mix all sorts of nasty stuff together and they think it's a lot of fun. And the guys back at headquarters are sitting there laughing because at night every one of those things 
sends to headquarters the data on what kind of drinks were mixed by zip code. By zip code. So those marketing guys know more about what the customer's drinking than they ever have before. That's why they're coming out with that new Diet Coke with bacon drink based on what's going on. You guys have been great. Thanks for letting me be here. Have a wonderful time. <laughs>